Adding clips to a sequence and removing them again is pretty straightforward when you're working on a single track, and that's what I've got here. Four clips one after another on a video audio track, and pretty straightforward to add things to that. By the by, you can right-click on a track header and choose Rename, and Edis will let you call a track anything you like. But it's pretty handy when you're learning, at least, to begin by leaving the track name as it is. It helps you to see what kind of track you're working with. But what if I want to move things on to separate tracks? Perhaps I want to put the video from this source clip onto my 2V track, and I want to put the audio down on the 1A track. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm just going to remove this title track because I'm not going to use titles in this sequence. So I've selected it with the left mouse button. I'm right-clicking, and I'm choosing Delete Selected Tracks. There we go. I'm just going to resize my interface a little bit so you can see more clearly what's going on. And I want to have just focus on these source track buttons. At the top, I've got a V button to turn on and off any video tracks, and an A button to turn off and on any A tracks. And you might wonder, well, why have I got a V button? I've only got one down here anyway. Well, that's because if I want to, I can put a sequence in the player monitor here, and I can then have potentially five or six video tracks. I can turn them all off and on with this button. Now, if I want to drag this clip into the timeline to separate it onto different tracks, that's fine. I can click and drag onto this 2V track, and automatically, Edius, if I zoom in a little bit, oops, the other way, automatically, Edius puts the audio onto the 1A track. Now, if I wanted to do this with the keyboard, it would be a rather different affair. All I need to do is click and drag the source V button, this is the source video channel, up until it's next to my 2V track. There we go. And if I want to bring the audio down to my audio 1 and 2 tracks, I can click and drag that down. And if I want to split the audio so that it is across those two tracks, I need to right click and choose audio source channel stereo. There's not much difference on this menu when the buttons are split or when they're together, but you'll notice I've got a stereo icon there. If I select that and then right click again, you see it's a mono icon. It's a pretty small difference, but you can see it. Now I've got my source audio one and audio two split to different tracks. And if I click one of these buttons, there we go, straight onto the timeline as separate tracks. Now, you could be forgiven for thinking, what's the point? Surely it's easy enough for me to just use the mouse and drag and drop things everywhere. And that is completely fine. That's a perfectly good way of editing. But you'll find, as you become increasingly familiar with the EDS interface, that it's quicker to use the keyboard shortcuts if you possibly can. And so in this case, for example, I could use the right bracket key, and there we go, I've added the clip. And using the keyboard in this way really is a dramatic time saver. Another thing about track patching is, of course, I don't have to have my audio tracks lined up with the equivalent timeline tracks. I can bring my audio one down here if I like. Or for that matter, if I click to turn off audio two, and now I edit the clip onto the timeline, I'm just getting the audio one. Now you'll notice here, I think, that I just click the button to add the clip to the timeline, but my number four audio track was switched off. And there are other edit systems on the market that use the track headers as a sort of record enable. And that's not the case with Edius. With Edius, it's the track selection buttons for the source that define whether or not something is added to the timeline. Conversely, the track headers are used for removing items from the timeline. So that's track patching. A nice simple example here, a source video clip with two audio tracks and quite a small timeline. But it's exactly the same principle when you work with more complex sequences.